Welcome to part two of our Easter egg video for Social Media Asicist, part two. And if you haven't watched part one, here's a quick recap. So, Jason has a baby. Stop, we don't have time. There are so many references to get through. Watch part one up here, and everyone else, let's meet the Maniac Pixie Dream Girl. An original slasher creation, and definitely not Sally Face. Because I had no idea who that was until you started commenting about it. The MPDG, as we'll call her for short, is played by Gina DeVivo, who also did all the costumes for the film, as well as additional makeup. She uh, didn't sleep much during this shoot. I've always hated that there aren't a lot of female slasher killers out there, so I decided to create my own, based on the now thankfully defunct trope of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. This trope can be seen in movies like Garden State, Elizabeth Town, Scott Pilgrim, and Eternal Sunshine. In fact, her beanie is inspired by Kirsten Dunst, her hair is a combo of Kate Winslet and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and she has buttons from The Shins and Iron and Wine referencing the movie Garden State, which is on this button here. Her arm warmers are by KD Crochet and Crafts, and represent a previous relationship she had with Freddy Krueger. She has a Don't Tell Me to Smile patch that you should really take seriously, because otherwise she'll add your teeth to her smile necklace. Her face is a blank slate, allowing her to become whatever her lover needs her to be. That is, until she kills them and turns them into a very fashionable messenger bag. And that's our original slasher, the Maniac Pixie Dream Girl. Now back to the characters I didn't create! <laughs> Please don't sue me. Her slow motion entrance parallels Carrie's from part one, which in turn was a reference to Not Another Teen Movie. Behind her, we see Ronald Jr. from the Silent Night reboot, played by Logan Petrie, who would not stop flossing on set. Next to him is Donald Sutherland's character from the Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake, played by producer, 5SF star, and Dude Bro Party Massacre 3 writer-director, Michael Russole. I need this so badly. <laughs> who reprised this role in a real dumb outtake video we made during the pandemic. Cut. We then see Mia from the Evil Dead remake, played by Whitney Jones. And here is the tire iron killer, Andy Richards from the 2009 Sorority Row remake. Oh, and that pickaxe with forms impaled on it? Belongs to the miner from My Bloody Valentine 3D. Finally, we have John Carpenter's Thing, at least his poster form, played by Tom Jacobson, who was in charge of the art department and putting all these references together in an appealing manner, including this Buddy HR poster and another Ghanaian poster, this time for Mrs. Doubtfire, that for some reason involves an impalement and Kevin Pollock. I don't get it, I just love it. The MP DG hands Freddy a folder about millennial fears, while behind her we see another buddy poster. Oh, and I forgot to mention that Jason's outfit is inspired by his classic part 4 attire, and he's wearing a hockey tie, because, you know, he fucking likes hockey. As Jason looks at his wedding ring, we look at a Fangoria magazine, a near-dark Bill Paxton sticker, RIP, and a to-do list that includes a completed check for moving the headstones, but not the bodies, which is a reference to Poltergeist. Son of a bitch, you moved the cemetery, but you left the bodies, didn't you? You only moved the headstones! Back on the list, we see Call a Stranger Back, referring to the When a Stranger Calls remake, and Pickup John Ryder references the Hitcher remake with Sean Bean. On the calendar, we see Friday the 13th circled as the big day, followed by a day off for some self-care and cleanup. Red slash Adelaide's recital refers to Jordan Peele's Us, right near another Jordan Peele reference, with the coagula and avoiding the tea from Get Out. The trip to Midwich refers to the Village of the Damned, and below that is Flight 180, which is the doomed flight from Final Destination. Slightly obscured behind Jason's hand is Garbage Day, referencing Silent Night, Deadly Night too. Carpet day! Jason cuts off his wedding finger to hide his relationship, which actually took about 20 takes, and we only got it on the very last one. Oh, yeah! And in the bloody aftermath, we can see Movie Night with Uncle Dusty, a character played by Patton Oswalt in Rocket Jump's short-lived anthology series, Dimension 404. And behind that knife, there's a note for a Pathfinder meeting, again referencing the amazing Legend of Beaver Dam short film. <laughs> Back in the kitchen, there are thankfully no new references. <sighs> But that doesn't last long as we can transition to the boardroom. Behind Jason are some appropriately evil horror-themed voodoo donuts, a Walking Dead pop-up book, and a poster for the Suspiria reboot. The man behind Jason is the founder of Reboot Co., Mr. Michael Bay, whose company Platinum Dunes is responsible for tons of horror reboots, including the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Amityville Horror, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Don't freak out. <laughs> The Latin under him was supposed to say fuck your childhood as their company motto, but rechecking it with Google Translate, it looks to be your child's childhood. Which is still a dumb thing Michael Bay would say. The Rebroats laugh at Jason, and at me, because now I have to go through all the Easter eggs on the board behind them. But before that, take a look at Michael Myers' pocket, where we can now see a Rob Zombie pin, referencing the man that directed the ultra-violent and booby Halloween reboot films. There are over 90 movies and TV shows in these lists, and it'd be super boring just to read them to you right now, so I asked my friend and Jordan Good to do a Yakko's World style song parody covering all the names. Take it away, Jordan! 
having thought, I'm just gonna save time by posting pictures to our social media pages. Moving on, we get a reference to Carrie's kaleidoscope vision, which ends with a very long range blood spray from a paper cutter going into Ghostface, uh, Ghostface. Man, that's gotta hurt. I feel like it's not so much here <laughs> This effect was pulled off by the other two-thirds of our practical effects team, David Sherbrook and Scott Dawson of Infested Films. Ghost Bro is then pushed into a chair by his murderer, the maniac pixie dream girl, revealing an accurate graph showing the decay of the franchise due to Tom Savini's departure after four. He then rolls away in a reference to Mark's machete face kill from Friday the 13th Part 2. The door slams and we see that we are in the Toby Hooper Memorial Memorial Conference Room, referencing the too soon departure of the director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Poltergeist, and to a lesser extent, Funhouse. <laughs> oh, and there's another buddy poster on the door as Jason prepares for Carpet Day! The Rebroats freak out while Pinhead holds up a Looney Tunes style sign referencing the previous video's murder spree. Jason and MPDG ignore the rules and run with scissors towards the bullies. And with a Scott Pilgrim esque social media asset kick, Pinhead goes down onto the table with some more fun references, including Leatherface's notes of who he wants to make a mask of, which includes Zorin, Carol from HR, or that cute dude in Riverdale. I mean, there's so many to choose from on that show Archie, Jughead, Resident Dilf Tom Keller. Do we need to have a talk? Maybe. Avoiding that conversation, behind Pinhead we see a post-it referencing fictional producer John Milton from Scream 3, and a partially seen Adam Kesher from Mulholland Drive, which is a movie I'm thinking could have been better. You're too busy being a smart aleck to be thinking. Pinhead is then killed like Tina from Friday the 13th Part 5, except with an office twist and some great gore from Ryan Ward. Also in the original footage you can see Lee Russell's mouth and nose behind the mask, but the incredible Nate Foster did some After Effects voodoo to fix it in post. Oh, Zorin, you're well. Stop! We don't have time! There's still two minutes to go in this music video! After taking a moment to make sure Jason's finger is okay... Boo -boo. <laughs> It's time for Big Bubba's demise as Jason slams him into a Hang In There churchy poster, referencing the classic Hang In There kitty poster, as well as another rebooted film, Pet Cemetery. And that poster was created by the uber-talented Sarah Hasse. Visit her webpage! Leatherface's wall slam references the Friday the 13th Part 6 death of Nikki, when her face is slammed into the side of an RV. And this kill was done with a very fun sheet of rubber. Next up is hands down the most commented on kill in the video. My buddy boss, James A. Janese, creator of the kill count on his YouTube channel, Dead Meat. Going against what I learned earlier, I'm gonna respond to the comments saying that the dinner party guest should have been counted in these kills. But in our world, James was hired by Reboot Co. to only count kills that happened in the office. So comment on that! Hey! James counts up kills in front of a Crossroads Mall motivational poster referencing the 2004 Dawn of the Dead reboot. Cause when the living dead get in your way, always remember to give it your mall. James is stopped from getting to the numbers by a bag grab that definitely did not happen in the first take. <laughs> Close. In the wide shot, we get another buddy poster, as well as a magical bag compacting James's body down to allow us to kill him with one of his very favorite kills from Friday the 13th, Part 7. <laughs> The ridiculous bag death is called out as James counts himself in his first ever on-screen death. And he couldn't have been happier about it. I'm a bloody buddy. Oh, 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 how does that feel? Not good. <laughs> well, mostly. Now it's time to give Michael their best shot by knocking his block off in an homage to Julius's death in Friday the 13th Part 8. Oh, and behind him, out of focus, is more Dave Pollard art of Cthulhu and Freddy in Paris, which is a movie I'd love to see. May we, ha ha ha! This decapitation was done all practically, and then layered into the scene the way our god Savini intended. That was f***ing amazing. Whoa! Michael's head lands in a barrel of Tromaville toxic waste, referencing the Toxic Avenger and countless other trauma movies. Next to the barrel is the other great decapitator, Shorty from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Knock my block off. <laughs> And he's played by effects man, Ryan Ward. Nothing got on Ryan, no splash whatsoever. That's how Ryan does it. Behind him, we can see some stickers made by one of my favorite artists, Andy Social. We can see the deadly spawn, the craft, buddy from Slaughterhouse, and the horribly slow murderer with the extremely inefficient weapon. If you don't know what that is, take a look at this. We 
We also have a more legible pest control poster, signs for sequels, threequels, and fourquels, and a photo commemorating another great horror director, George A. Romero. Oh, and in case you're wondering, Shorty is obscuring a storyboard from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, signed by the Kyoto Brothers themselves. Sometimes I sleep with it. Yeah, all the time! Back in the office, there's another blurry painting with Samara from The Ring, behind a very practical blood spray we filmed in the 5SF house's backyard. The MPDG prepares for her really big kiss, until she is splashed with so much blood that luckily we got it in one take. Got it. Jason's taken aback as we see another motivational poster, this time for the Hills Have Eyes remake. Because remember, if at first you don't succeed, just reboot it and add more mutant hillbillies. Our very bloody dream girl transitions back to my favorite moment from the first video, with Carrie's loving look of relief at young Jason. We then move into Carrie and Jason's red wedding, where they're dressed in Lydia and Beetlejuice's outfits. I'm telling you, honey, she meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. While the preacher from that movie, played by Gina DeVivo, presides over the ceremony. Freddy is the best man in his striped bow tie, hearkening back to his look in Nightmare Part 3. The maid of honor is Motherface from Dude Bro Party Massacre 3, played by Ellie Glavich, who provided so much delicious food for us on the shoot. She's holding a bouquet of apples from our Isaac Newton Dracula mashup, Count Calcula. And finally, we have the Ring Bearer, which of course is Samara, played by Anna Miro, our fantastic makeup woman. You may have missed it, but our archway is filled with Little Audrey 2s from Little Shop of Horrors, all handmade by Gina DeVivo. Is there anything that woman can't do? Back at the family picnic, Jason is wearing a fun slasher shirt while holding his child next to Belial from Basket Case and Leo the Critter, who's chewing on a bone that I assume is not from a human. Yes. Not from a human. Jason is then told to wake up by the actual Tom Matthews, who played Tommy Jarvis in Friday the 13th Part 6, as well as the Never Hike Alone fan films. And man, he couldn't have been a nicer guy. We return back to reality, but there aren't any new references. So Jason runs to his car to glue his finger back on, using Almer's Parasite Glue, which is a reference to the creature in the movie Brain Damage. On the dashboard, we have a black Philip bobblehead from The Witch, and driving behind him is the Green Goblin truck from Maximum Overdrive. And of course, like the first video, there's a Back to the Future reference, with this hoverboard and an incognito Marty McFly trying to steal it, but instead of Michael J. Fox, we've got Michael J. Gremlin. Also, this is one of only two shots where Jason was played by Ted Evans instead of Jeremy Connie. You got anything to say for yourself, Jeremy? I'm in Chicago. Stop! We don't have time! We make it back to Jason and Carrie's house to find a wall of masks, many of which were made by Maniac Masks. We can see Tom Savini's mask from Friday the 13th, the game, the poster mask for Part 8, Roy Burns' mask from Part 5, the poster mask from Jason Goes to Hell, his blue NES mask, and the Freddy vs. Jason mask. Friday is, of course, missing because it's Friday the 13th, and he's wearing his favorite part four mask. Around the corner, we see a framed picture of the legendary Dick Miller from Bucket of Blood, and so many more movies, including Chopping Mall, which includes the titular line from James's Dead Meat channel. But if I ever find a little bastard that did this, a dead meat. The weapons in the umbrella stand reference Jason's various killing tools from across the franchise. Jason sees Carrie and a blink and you'll miss it cameo from Puppet Master's Blade. Why was she talking to Blade? Well, I was going to do a short film describing Carrie's side of the story, but then, you know, 2020 happened. So let me know in the comments if you want to see a Carrie side video on my channel. Carrie is wearing Jason's Camp Crystal Lake shirt from Social Mediascus 1, and she's resting on a Tarman pillow from Return of the Living Dead, all while Leo the Critter hangs in the backyard. And unfortunately, you can't see it, but Carrie is wearing shining carpet tights and gremlin socks, which actor Whitney stole. Jason professes his love for no new references, and take notice that we did make up his hand to show he had severed his finger. It's the little things, you know? We then jump to the mantle where we see tons of photos and cards referencing Graduation Day, Five Nights at Freddy's, Sharknado, Silence of the Lambs, The Lumberjack Man, Black Christmas, Prevenge, Prevenge, Social Media Asicus 1, and a mask from the Jason knockoff video game Splatterhouse. Jason and Carrie meet in front of a framed picture of their first kiss from Social Media Asicus. And again, I don't know who took that picture. Carrie then pulls Jason's tucked hair back through his axle, showing that she truly gets him. Since this was the look he had in part one when she fell in love with him, that he was now denying in the beginning of this video. They fall in love all over again, the end of Jason, as his head is split in half with an amazing practical effect that involved us setting up a kill room in order to get the shot just right. <laughs> now I actually have the body in this box and I haven't opened it in the two years since we filmed it. So stay tuned to the end of this video so you can find out what kind of hell state this thing is in. <laughs> Behind dead Jason, we see a shrieker from Tremors 2 Aftershocks and the creepy murder painting from Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, I don't think so. 
The maniac pixie dream girl is revealed as the killer, as we get a Carrie-esque split screen and a live frown emoji. Carrie goes all the rage on MPDG and uses her telekinesis to pull an Ash vs. Evil Dead style Kandarian dagger from the dishwasher, which also has a Hannibal Lecter mask and the actual Ghost Jason mask used in Never Hike Alone. Leo the Critter is startled by such references. The dagger travels in a very Evil Dead Sam Raimi-esque shot and embeds itself in a styrofoamy pixie dream torso. Can I get this thing out? Next, Carrie goes for a syringe of reanimation serum from the reanimator, which sits on top of a Miskatonic University notebook from that same film. Under that is a Creepshow comic and an on-set with John Carpenter photograph book. Next to that, we see the Lament configuration from Hellraiser, a Cerveza Chongo beer from From Dusk Till Dawn, a Shemp's beer koozie from Ash vs. the Evil Dead, a Pazuzu statue from The Exorcist, a mini Monster Squad arcade game, and a very obscure Zeke the Plumber slasher movie from Nickelodeon's Salute Your Shorts. Friends, call me Zeke. The books in the background are Uzumaki by John G. Ito, If Chins Could Kill by Bruce Campbell, Monster Hunt, A Guide to Cryptozoology, an H.P. Lovecraft collection, Kane Hodder's autobiography, Gray Sports Almanac, because I love Back to the Future, and My Extraordinary Life by Sissy Spacek, who of course played Carrie. The syringe stabs and Blade is pulled away from his window escape in a shot I puppeteered very awkwardly all by myself. I think I got something. The Maniac Pixie Dream Girl is killed, although who knows what that reanimation serum can do. Maybe Cheers actor John Ratzenberger knows, as we see him in a photo from House 2, the second story. I like you got some kind of alternate universe in there or something. On the couch is a corner of an Army of Darkness S-Mart pillow, as well as a Jeff Goldblum pillow referencing nothing more than the man himself. <laughs> the Maniac Pixie Dream Girl lands on a Jason mask pillow from Social Media Eskis 1, as Carrie mourns the end of the references. But wait, there must be more! Gina DeVivo doubles as Carrie, putting Jason in a nanite chamber. And then Whitney returns to type on the computer from Evil Speak. A reference producer Michael Rousselet fought so hard to get into this music video. Actually, Zorn. Stop! You know this bit by now! But you don't know what Carrie's typing, which is. Did anyone notice that this is the computer from Evil Speak? Here are some other computer horror movies Pulse, Stay Alive, Brainscan, Fear.com, Evolver, Ghost in the Machine, and How to Make a Monster. Kudos to anyone that was actually able to read that. Carrie finishes her resurrection protocol, and we witness the birth of Uber Jason from Jason X. Get away from me, Space Jason. Uh... Get away from me, Space Jason. <laughs> <laughs> And his mullet was actually a happy accident. Since the mask was too big, we stuffed two wigs in there to compensate. And then one of them fell down. But hey, I kind of like mullet Jason. What do you think, Logan? <laughs> oh, Logan! Jason and Carrie share another kiss to celebrate the rekindling of their love as we fade out and away from the references. Thanks for watching, and here's your coupon code for- Don't feel bad, it was just my ear. Oh, you didn't think we were done, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Silly. We save the best cameo for last. The incredible Ricky Dean Logan reprises his role as Carlos, 28 years after Freddy's dead, the final nightmare. Nice hearing from you, Carlos. You may also know Ricky Dean Logan as the man from Back to the Future 2 who said, Hey McFly, you bojo! <laughs> Don't pour Star Wars gun water! So this cameo is a perfect confluence of my two great loves, horror and Back to the Future. Freddy and Carlos heckle Jason's new Uber look while reading a Fangoria magazine. This interaction solidifies the transition from Freddy and Jason being best buds in high school to eventual enemies in the future. Like Professor X and Magneto, or me and Vincent DeSanti. Wait, why are you mad at me? You know what you did. Anyway, it was an honor to work with Ricky, and here's a glimpse at some alternate takes for our final scene. Freddy, who am I? Uh, uh... Come on, man, put your thinking cap on, dude! I'm that asshole! Oh, Sean, <laughs> you're him! He <laughs> calls you an asshole! Oh, shit! You are! Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? It's all metal and dumb! Ooh! Ooh! Can you believe that shit, man? Jason! Is he looking at me? And now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting our weird little social media asochist universe. And in case you missed it in the first video, here's a 25% off coupon code you can use for anything in our store, including this previous Kickstarter exclusive t-shirt by Joanna Davidovich. And to finish things off, it's time to find out what's in the box. What's in the box? All right, here we go. It's, um, oh, that's not what I expected. But um, thanks for watching. I love this dog. Let's go on! All right, it's been two years since I have opened this thing. Oh, 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 okay. Let's see if I can get this guy out. Oh boy. Oh man, his legs just have all fallen apart. He's got no pants on. Good man. My poor baby boy. What happened to you? Oh, that is hopefully blood. That's what Jason's dead body looks like. Stop it, leave me alone. Ah!
Oh God, this thing is sticky. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed social media asikis too. See you for the third one. Whenever that is. I did not just announce that I'm doing a third one. We'll probably do a third one. Probably. Probably.